Hi, y'all. It's Angela, and I'm back for another episode of Business Unveiled. And I am super excited today to be talking with a planner sister. We probably have a lot of the same stories to share, crazy stories of being in the emotional money spending roller coaster event and wedding industry. And not only is she a planner, we both have naturally curly hair. We're like curly sisters from across the world. And her events are absolutely beautiful. She is also a podcast host. And so we both have a huge heart for education. We also share the same just design eye because there's not a lot of business owners and planners that do offer weddings, events, logistics, and design. It's really two different things and she gets it, which is awesome. So I'm super, super excited to talk to her today. So I want to bring on Fiela Miera. She's from Peru, which I have an aunt that lived in Peru, and she totally had this accent. And I'm like, what are you saying? But it's just really funny. So welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I had no idea that you had an aunt that lived in Peru. I do. <laughs> she lives in Peru right now? Yeah, she oh my gosh. she met a man. I mean, she's like my great aunt, so she's in her upper 70s, but she's been married forever, and she met a man from Peru, and she's lived there for as long as I've been alive, probably, and um, wow. I, like for Christmas and stuff, she sends us like these precious little llama, um, like stuff. Yeah. <laughs> And so, like, even before llamas were, like, everywhere, mm -hmm. like, cool, um, in the United States, like, me and my brother and sister had all these, like, little stuffed llamas. And I remember I, I went to the – my mom took us to the zoo. I was, like, a teenager, and I'd never seen, like, a real llama. I'm like, are these things actually real? And, you know, cause I didn't know these things. And so I was like talking to this llama. It was so beautiful and fluffy and all of a sudden it like reared back and then like it spit all over me. <laughs> which I didn't know what, which FYI, if you ever go to the zoo and you see llamas, um, don't get too close and like talk baby talk, pet talk, because mm -hmm. it will, it will spit all over you possibly. It was disgusting. And then I'm like, I hate llamas. Yeah, it's pretty anyway, gross. It's really funny. But um, llamas and alpacas are mainstream now. So that's really? kind of yeah. a cool thing to have. You know, yeah. Llama. It's so crazy. <laughs> so you are from Peru. And how, before we ever, before we even jump into the whole like entrepreneurship journey of like owning a, an event planning and design company, take us back like down your journey of how did you even get into the events industry? How did you know you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Um, what did that journey look like for you? Welcome to Business Unveiled, the podcast designed to help you thrive in the creative community. Here's your host, events and productivity consultant, Angela Profit. Hi, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Business Unveiled, expert tips and secrets from top creative industry professionals, where we take you behind the scenes of our past experiences in the creative industry and share with you what we have learned from them and how they have made us stronger. This podcast will help you grow a productive and profitable business to launch you into success within the creative industry. Today's podcast is brought to you by Vlog Easy. That is V as in victory. Vlog Easy is an app in the iTunes store for iPhones that help you make content videos as well as vlogging on the go to share with your audience. It has absolutely transformed Formed the way that I do video and communicate with my audience. If you are looking for an app that allows you to edit 
on the go. Or if you simply don't know how to edit videos, this app allows you to do just that. You can record yourself in a quiet room. You don't have to remember what to say. You can simply look at your notes and each time you're quiet and you pause, the Vlog Easy app takes all of those quiet moments out and edits everything together. It's like magic and it saves so much time. Vlog Easy allows you to record in vertical or horizontal formatting. You can import existing videos that live on your phone into the app and so much more. Vlog Easy Pro gives you the unlimited cloud backup as well as removing the watermark. Give it a try for free today. The link is bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y slash Vlog Easy. And all all caps. Vlog easy is case sensitive, so be sure that you've got that caps lock on and you're putting in vlog easy in all uppercase. V is in Victor, L O G E A S Y. Give it a try. Oh, it's a super long story, but I'm going to kind of condense it for you. Um, when I moved to the States, I moved to a very small town. In Wisconsin and the culture was a lot different so in Peru we went to parties every party even if it was a house party it was catered and had big cakes desserts it had a bartender um, a DJ even if it was somebody's 11th birthday which has no significance whatsoever on Saturdays you could go down the street and see who was having a party because you could tell they had a DJ in their house and that wow. was <laughs> the coolest thing as a you know like a preteen yeah. And when I came to the States, the parties weren't like that. You know, it was no. just like chips and, and dip. And, um, and as I grew up, that was one of the things that I missed the most about the, about home, that parties were not the same. And then as I grew up, I started seeing weddings and I saw weddings were not the same. So um, I was actually a dancer and I was dancing professionally um, at a theater knowing that I was going to get into the, into business somehow. And I knew in the back of my head that event, the event industry was like where I was going to land eventually when I decided to move away from performing. And when I did move away from performing, I started looking for jobs in the event industry and I couldn't get hired because I didn't have any experience. So oh my gosh. I, I was like, well, if I'm not going to get hired, I might as well give myself the experience. Right. So I ended up working at a hotel. That's a local hotel in Wisconsin Dells. And it's owned by a family, a local family. And three months after I started, I was working at the front desk. I noticed that they were going to have a New Year's party. And I went up to the manager at the front desk and I said, I want to do this for a living. This, I want to have my own business and I want to help you guys. Well, the next day, the owner called me to their office and I was like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. Like I <laughs> overstepped. Like this is a huge issue now. I'm going to lose my job. And she was like, I'll give you a few hours. Come back with a plan. That's so amazing. I sat on the front desk. I was supposed to be checking people in, but I sat on like, I sat on um, Google Docs and I was like putting circles together and I was like this is what we can do with the floor plan and if we move the entire arcade out um what this is what we can do and I showed it to her and she's like well we're going to Florida we're going to come back the week of um like you you, you got it like go for it <laughs> wow I was like cool how many people are going to be here she's like the entire hotel and I'm like there's like 700 rooms in the entire hotel oh my god like, yeah I'm like okay cool and that was my first event ever. Wow. And that's kind of how I got started. So um, I had their New Year's parties for their hotel every year for about five years. And then they acquired a year later, they acquired a nightclub. So I helped with their nightclub New Year's parties too. And I did that for about, yeah, for about four, yeah, five New Year's I did that. And then I wanted to make it a business and not yeah. just a once a year kind of thing. So I opened my business officially 
in and legally like with your LLC and all of that yeah. in 2014. That's and that's awesome. when I really started going for it. And that's, 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 that's my story. I was just, you know, trying to get some experience and then I kind of got all this experience that was um, large events, you know, and then I, I opened my business and started doing weddings to add to the income. So how did you pick your company name? So it's your last name and then event group. So did you have any type of insight or strategy on, because a lot of new people that I coach and even one of the questions, I don't know if you get this a lot. They're like, how did you decide to make your company your name? And I'm like, well, actually I didn't. <laughs> it just kind of happened because like I had, a, I had other names, but people kept just using my name. And so how did you decide like, okay, I'm going to use my last name and we're going to be event group. And obviously you saw the big picture. You knew that you wanted to do all types of events, not just niche and pigeonhole yourself like, okay, we're only going to do New Year's parties or we're only going to do weddings. So did you see that big picture? Yeah. So um, I come from an entrepreneurial family. So I always wanted, I had this vision, even when I was in high school, that I was going to own a business that would have multiple streams of income. And um, when I started my business and, you know, you went, you go through these um, stages where you're like, should I be named? Lawless Weddings, should I be named this? And one of the, what, for one year, we were near our productions and that's our, actually our legal LLC. And I was just like, this just screams videography to me. So we, oh, the next yeah. year, I was like, this does not scream event production, um, though it did in my head at the time. Mm -hmm. And I switched it to New York Event Group because I knew that I wanted to service multiple events and have the flexibility to flex with the market um, because some years were heavier on the event side and some years were heavier on the wedding side, but we're both just known as the area's event planner. And I also knew that I wanted to have multiple departments eventually. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I, wouldn't, I wanted to add design eventually after I had the planning and under my belt. And so in the, under the design, I knew I wanted to have some sort of rentals and that I wanted to do some sort of floral design for the wedding side of the business. And with that, I had to pick something a little bit broader that mm -hmm. would allow me to have that flexibility. So, I mean, that's really good to know because some people, will, in, even coming from an entrepreneurial family, I didn't. And I don't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> some days I'm like, oh my God, I'm 20 years into being a business owner. And like, when the hell am I going to stop like suffering from like these mistakes that are very costly sometimes? Oh, yeah. um, Cause I think we've rebranded like four or five times <laughs> over the years, because when, when you're not thinking of the big picture, like, especially with new business owners and new people that want to get experience and own their own company. It's like nowadays, I feel like I'm almost like jealous because there are people like us who actually have a heart for education and, and really truly helping others, probably because like of how we started out. Right. I mean, no one would give you, give you a job. <laughs> no, no one would give me a job. No one yeah. would even tell, like, let me know. Okay, cool. I called so many planners and I was like, I just need to have a little bit more experience. And I'm talking about, you know, when I was 19 in 2009, when, where I knew I was still performing, but I knew that this was going to come up because I wasn't going to start traveling and all of those things that you do when you start doing regional theater. And I wanted to get a little bit more experience, but it was back in those days where rising tide didn't exist. So the whole community thing wasn't established mm -hmm. in our area yet. And I, he I heard a lot of no's and this lady that I, that I worked for, that it wasn't a position. She's like, I get it. I get what you're struggling with. And I get that this, this market is not ready for you right now, but I get what you're trying to, trying to do and the service that you're trying to provide in the area. And she was like, I get it. 
let's do it. Like, I'll give you, you know, she, she helped me with so much just by simply giving me those events to produce and, and lead. It was so much fun. And what an awesome, like mentor and someone to look up to. And I feel like there are more women like that these days where it's like, come on, I see what you're trying to do. Like, let me help you. But back when I started my business, like that shit didn't exist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm just falling on my face left and right. Um, <laughs> but and that's it, harder. <laughs> it is, it is. And so I feel like it is a lot easier. That's why like, sometimes I'm just like jealous of these younger people. I'm like, you have so many amazing people around you that can help you like, just listen. Oh my God. Um, but one of the things that I know you're very passionate about is like teaching people to cover the basics before like going all out. And so before it's funny, cause I'm mentoring a floral shop owner right now and she's got multiple locations, multiple revenue streams in terms of not just flowers, but like gifting. And she's got like cute, like candles and jewelry and things in some of her shops. And she's like, when she came to me, she's like, okay, my plan, I'm going to open five locations in five of the biggest cities. And I'm like, but wait, your other businesses in, in, in our hometown, like they have so much potential. Like Mm -hmm. you're only doing one thing. And so a lot of young business owners, I'm like, let's back up, make sure that we're covering every opportunity we can be covering. They say like, get your shit fixed at home (laughs) before you like take it out on the road and other markets, like they're different. Like they're not like any other, it's like when you're working in your hometown, like you've got your family, you meaning like your vendors, if you've been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you mean? Like to you, what are the basics before a business owner, a planner or a creative designer, what should they do before like just saying like, I'm going to add all these different streams. Like what, what's the basics to you? Yeah. So we're talking streams of income. Um, I, so I was a planner first and I knew I was going to get into some floral design of some sort and I jumped right in. Um, luckily I had the flower touch. I didn't even, I've never been trained. I was just like, cool, we're going to make this giant centerpiece. And we did, but some people don't have that. Right. And then the other thing is doing both at the same time is so much work that I found myself the first year crying at four in the morning so many times that I was just like, I don't know that this is for me anymore. Mm -hmm. So when I, when we're talking basics about expanding services is making sure that you have the team, even if it's a team that it's like, I'm willing to learn just having the, the extra hands to delegate a new service or delegate the the service that you have already honed down, that is you have all your workflows set. You know that when you receive a client, this is your next step. After the contract, there's their deposit. After their deposit, they get uploaded into their own workflow, their own client portal. And then this is how you get started, all the communication. So that's what I mean by basics. The first service needs to be almost, um, streamlined so you can move your attention to the next thing and when i say that i i also think as a as a business owner you move into not only being a planner but now you're a business owner now you're an employer now your your head is not only handling your planning clients but you're handling employees and their workflows so now you're also human resources and making sure right. that they're happy and that what you're providing, the training that you're providing, the environment that you're providing is also a positive environment. So your basics, if you're a planner or you're a floral shop and you want to expand into something else, you want to have that really well streamlined or documented in a way that throughout the years it is going to change. You can easily go back to that document and change it. So when new people are coming in that you're training, you can train them the proper way and they can have all the information available to them to actually perform for you and on behalf of you. 
Amen. Be on, like that is key because if you don't train people appropriately, like we call it the brand guide Bible or, you know, yeah, you have scripts. And I mean, we even have a list of like bad words in the office, which I'm not talking about like, fuck, shit, damn, <laughs> like, <laughs> which those words are said a lot at 4 a.m. <laughs> um, I'm talking about like saying the word like no and no problem. And it's like, no, like no negativity, no, no contract, like no, never say can't and won't. And, you know, finding a way to reframe is so important. And so if you have your language down, like you said, a positive environment, and let me tell you, it's real hard sometimes to be positive mm -hmm. yeah. when I haven't slept in three days, <laughs> and, which is not good. Um, but sometimes it's like planners and designers, we take on these projects and because we have good intentions and then it's like, why did I say I would do this? Like, <laughs> um, but we learn from them every single time. <clears throat> and much like you, I mean, I planned for almost 10 years and I had designers that I worked with who owned their own companies, but unfortunately they really weren't running a business. It was like, they had great ideas, but they didn't have the execution piece Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know that until other vendors started to come to me and say, listen, we love you, but we cannot work with these, this girl anymore. And I mean, so I was kind of pushed into like, okay, well, I guess I'll try it. Um, but then I learned about myself that I really love design way more than the planning. And, but I will say, <clears throat> like you said, know how to do every aspect of your business so when you do hire people or outsource, you know, if they're doing something they shouldn't be doing. Um, so it's like, I would never ask someone to do something that I haven't done before. Like go like clean up the vomit from the drunk people. Like, yeah, I've done that. And guess what? I still do that. I still hold hair back mm -hmm. and dresses up while people are puking. <laughs> it's so mm -hmm. gross. But that's just part of it. Like, it's so glamorous, right? Yeah. We do this for the champagne we get to drink. Right? It's just, <laughs> oh my God. So like as a, someone that knew you wanted to own your own business, but you needed to get that experience, what, how did you know, like, even what a workflow was? Because like, I go into some design companies that have been around for 20 years and they, I'm like, so what's your process? They've got post-it notes and paper everywhere and they're afraid of technology. They're afraid. It's like they kind of have a workflow, but they really don't have a solid plan. So if something happened to the owner or the lead person, it's like shit wouldn't happen because it's not in their proposals. And, you know, I'm like, so how do you know what's an inventory? And like one guy I worked with, he's like, oh, it's just in my head. And I'm like, no offense, dude, but if you got hit by a bus, like, could these people actually perform? So what are your thoughts in like creating like workflows? Like, did you start on paper and then adopt and embrace technology? Or did you always start with knowing that, okay, we're going to use software and how did you find those tools? So I think I found most of my tools in 2016 with about 2016. Um, I used to keep everything in my head and then um, I was like, well, that doesn't really work. So <laughs> um, then I put things into paper and then I was like, no, I really need, I really need something to be almost like reminding me. Um, then I put everything into Asana, which is a project management tool. Yep, and then I, from Asana, we added a client, um, Dubsado, so a CRM, um, because we were still doing things through paper, like signing contracts. And I was like, this is ridiculous. We can't be going to the post office every day. That's who does that anymore. Um, and then from there, it was just going down the process of each service. So as questions would come up from clients, I would write it down on my phone be like, okay, they asked me this question. How can I beat them to it? So instead of having the client reach out to me two months before and say, hey, when are we meeting again as an event management? 
which means that we're jumping a month before the wedding, jumping in a month before the wedding. I, and then I would be like, well, if you check at your contract, but I'm not going to say that, right? Because it's right. my job as the planner to be ahead of them. So that's when the CRM really came in and, I'll, and now all the emails are streamlined and they just have to read them basically. And if they don't, we have a reminder that says check in if they haven't responded. Um, so everything is really more with technology now. It is so much easier to have a workflow. Mm -hmm. And now it is so much easier to grow your team because of technology, because now I have all of these documents and workflows and we still use Asana for certain, for, for certain projects. And um, we're just able to bring them in, train them. We have videos, we have audio, um, we have templates to train our, our new people, which is not that many. My team is, my, I only have a team of three event managers. So it's, it's a lot easier to get them properly trained before they actually go out and practice with us. So does, does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, I mean, and also to like the importance of being able to pull your projects down from the cloud and using apps on your phone or on your iPad and being able to have a process and workflow. So if you are on another event or you're out of the country or heaven forbid you're sick, um, like you have your stuff safe so that anybody could go in from your team mm -hmm. and make sure that shit's still running and it's still happening, um, which is so important. I often see people that they, I mean, it was the same thing. It's like, this is all in my head and getting it out of my head, like it felt so good. Um, and then I also have had interns. They're like, so you're going to give me all of this information? And it's like, well, if, if I don't explain it to you and if you don't have the relationships with the companies and the vendors and the, uh, all of those people, like you're not going to know what to do with it. <laughs> so right. to, to you, it's like you're going to learn this information. Um, how have you expanded your team? Like how have you found – those people, do you have them intern beforehand or is there any type of a process that you have to find the right people? It's been both. So let me tell you that I first started by being a solo planner um, and I, everything was in my head and I knew how I ran a wedding by what was in my head and what I thought was right and how the client was and all of those um, little details that make you give you behavioral cues of how to ask and respond to your client based on their personality. And then when I had assistants with me, um, I would notice that they would be really great at helping us set up. But when it came to even just like looking at the timeline, they didn't really know why I did what I did. So right. they didn't know that I face the flowers a certain way because the photographer would if they hit it from a different angle, it's going to look like the flowers are dead or they're not, or backwards. And so they didn't know the details because I was handling it all. And then I started thinking, okay, I'm married, probably going to have kids someday. I don't, I still don't have kids. Um, <laughs> I've been very, very, very lucky that nothing has happened to my family. Um, we've never had any sort of emergency during any event, which I am so lucky and blessed to have that. Um, but things can happen. And I'm, I'm a healthy person, but things can happen to me. What happens then? What happens to all these years, all this work, all these events that I've worked my ass off if I don't have a backup? So not last year, but the year prior, I started just poking around before the season. So this is 19, 18, 17, the beginning of 17, um, seeing if there was any interest out there for people that would be willing to help me. And I found a past bride who was a, pa uh, a project manager and she's one of my friends now. Um, and she was great. Like she could run a wedding like the back of her hand because she has 
so many girlfriends and so many sisters that weddings was like what she did every summer, you know? And I was like, well, this is really great. Like we can have multiple weddings a weekend if, if I have a second person or if we have one and something happens to me, like we, we have a well oil machine. Yeah. So at the end of 17, I put a couple ads out to hire event managers and I found two, um, two people. One had a event management degree and had planned not only nonprofit, but a couple weddings. And another one had, mul- had been to multiple of my weddings as a bridesmaid. Oh, wow. So she had <laughs> personal experience with myself and she knew she had seen me interact with the bride and interact with vendors just because she was, she had been three of my weddings already in one year. And she was also, she's also in marketing. So she had that personality and, and I've just like lucked out with these two. And, um, we started training. I will, I will tell you that the hope was that they would take over all of my events and I would move into the creative director position last year. And, um, it didn't happen because I wasn't ready to let go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all it's so hard. That. It's so hard. And then some, some of my other, um, girls are, um, have moved up from being assistants. So, mm-hmm. which is nice because they know why certain linens are, are laid a certain way or why I want all the seams and the linens to be facing the same way, the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, and if we're doing flowers, they know that if we're working with a smaller budget, that the flowers are going to be, you know, all towards the front. And if there's no flowers on it, that's what faces the wall, yep. you know? And yep. it's so, oh, so many little things like centerpieces go actually in the center of the table, not how far your, your arm can reach. So right. I, <laughs> That's great. So that happened to you. <laughs> that yeah. happened to me for a little while. And I was like, what is happening? Why is the centerpiece not in the center of the table? Um, and so with that, you know, it, it's been a, mul- uh, a mix of some having the degree, um, one having the personality and experience of seeing me in, in, in action, and then one that is um, currently training to be an event manager who was all of last year, a really, really good event assistant. Um, to the point, like her first day, she just like got thrown into the, to the mix and she called me and she's like, cause I was uh, across town dur- at the ceremony. And she's like, um, yeah, I, I fluffed a, sen- a, a linen and it was outside. They moved it inside because I, we think it's going to rain for a little bit but I'm pretty sure it's full of bugs. Do you even want to use this anymore? And I was like, nope, but there's people that we've had in the past that we've, you know, that you try and they see things wrong Yeah. and they don't say anything mm-hmm. or they don't fix it themselves. And that's when you say, yeah, you're not meant for this. Exactly. Because when you see something is wrong, you see something, you say something that's like think fix all, it. all the time. <laughs> you can't fix it, we got to address it. And if we don't address it, we have to do something else. So after she said that, I was like, okay, you clearly have the intention to make everything the best it can be. Which is such a great feeling, right? (laughs) Oh my God. When you find somebody like that, it's such a, it's, it's amazing. It's like, you know, and um, yeah, so now she's, she's going to be starting her event management training. Um, and she's also a marketing gal, so she's got the personality too. So I've, I've just been really lucky to be surrounded by these amazing women. And um, I don't That's know, awesome. I wish I could tell you like the perfect um, recipe to find them. I think it takes time. I yeah. think it takes you putting yourself out there because the amount of ads I have put out there to find people has been insane. And most of the time they're within my own circles. So yeah. my, my flower, the flower lady that I work with, her name is Gary. She, she came from a, a friend referral. She said, my friend said, Hey, I have this, this lady. She, she worked, she, her schedule would work perfectly. She's never done flowers, but she's super creative. Tried her out. She's been with me. This is going to be her. I think this is her third year with me. That's so um, awesome. The beautiful work that she does is amazing. Um, 
so yeah, I've just been, you know, I guess after I say all of this, there, there might be a recipe, just look within your own circles. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for planners, I would say ask teachers because they know how to talk in front of people. They have That's to be a great thought. Um, they have to plan ahead and they have to deal with all sorts of personalities every single day and they don't work weekends and they have the summer off. So that's a great place to start if you need associate planners. Um, yeah. uh, and if you need assistance, there's tons, tons of people right now trying to get, trying to figure out what they want to do. So just putting it out there and see if there's anybody that would be willing to help as an assistant. Um, I think that would be a great place. But at least you knew that you needed other people and other, not just hands, but people that you could actually develop and train into a leadership role to free you up to do other things to expand the company. So at least you knew that going into yeah. it. And we're even still though, in the middle of it. I, I know yeah. sometimes it sounds like it's not, but it is still in the middle of it. We're still growing. We're still training. Um, but yeah, I, I just, it's really hard to let go. I think mm -hmm. the first wedding we I let go was in seven, 2017. And we had two events going on that day. My event had gotten done. I came back to the wedding venue just to peek. And my event manager was like, no, no, you're not coming in. I'm like, no. <laughs> Good for her. I like, no, I want to go in so that she's like, no, there's no need for you to come in. Everything's great. I'm like, okay, I'll go home now. And I just like you know, not put my head down and walk away. And, and it just, in a way, it does feel good because you're supported. And in another way, you have to let go so you can do other, other things so you can make everything as a whole. Right. Yeah. It's elevated. such a proud moment. <laughs> I know. It's so such. hard though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Such a proud moment. So what would you say like in terms of mistakes um, to avoid like as a new business owner or new planner, which, oh my God, like I try to call them. I'm like, from a positive angle, this is an opportunity. But in my head, I'm like, God, this was a very costly mistake. Like, what are some things that you experience like being a new planner and what do you teach new planners? Like what insights do you have and mistakes that happened to you? So I'm going to tell you too. Um, one, because we're talking about team and remember how I was like, you have to create all these documents so you can train your team. Um, yeah, you have to train your team. You can't just throw them in because I have learned the hard way when they've said the wrong thing to a client or mm. they have brought things up to a client that I would never bring up because they hired me. I'm going to make the decision. Um, and even when you have an event manager and you're ready for them to take something on, they have to be trained. So that, that is the biggest, was one there of the biggest mistakes. There was is there something that somebody said to a client and you're like wanting to crawl under the table? <laughs> um, I can't remember what exactly it was, but yeah. we didn't have a wedding that had changed their date. And in the time that they changed their date, we had already taken another client for that date. So we had to use our, one of our event managers. And there were a couple of things that had happened. Like, I want to say, I think this happened in 2016. So it was a few, a few years back. When, right before like dances happen, the first thing you do is you give five minute warnings to photographer, video, DJ, venue, mom, parents, and grandparents, because they're going to be there, right? They have to be there. And the first- And if they're in the bathroom, you wait, right? And if they're in the bathroom, you wait, <laughs> right? Yes. Like the DJ does not, or the band does not play that song until you give them that nod, thumbs up, or whatever your, your signal is. And the first dance started and mom left to have a cigarette. Oh, no. And she missed it. And I was not there because we had an event manager, but that was one of the things that I would do, but it was never put in our, into our training. 
because it's just something that I do. And so I thought, you know, if I do it, it's common sense. Hello. Yeah. But no, it's not. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal, but I took it like a step to the heart because, you know, you don't want to miss that special moment. And, um, and yeah, so from there I learned that I have to be an oversharer with, with my yes. team. Like I'm, I'm that person that's, that's like, I'm doing this because of this. And then if this doesn't happen, we're going to do this for this reason. And then that way they can, you know, if, it, like, for example, one time we always get done with setup at one o'clock, which we're super spoiled for, for in my region, <laughs> Yeah, uh, flowers, everything, one o'clock, one at 12, I'm, if I'm on site, I call for pizza. So one o'clock, we take a quick five minute, put food in your mouth, and then we quickly change into guest ready um, attire, and then people start coming in. So one time at two o'clock, I get a call from the baker and she's like, um, all of our crates have collapsed. We've lost half of the baking order. Oh my God. I'm like, cool. You're supposed to be here in half an hour. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, what can you do? She's like, I can send you half of the order right now and the rest we're going to have to come back and, and bake. And I was like, don't leave. You get baking. Yeah, we have all, and this is why I do it because it gives us a window. I was like, we have completed everything. My girls are done with my setup. Girls are done. I'm gonna send you my van and two girls. They're gonna load everything up, bring everything over here. You keep baking. Yes. And we had this display, and because we do flowers, which is the other reason why I like to do this because I have more control. Um, yes. We had tons of buckets of leftover. We always do, and. What we do with those buckets is we put them in places that basically just surprise and delight. They didn't order it, but we have extra. I'm not going to throw them away. I'm going to put them to use. So we had all these extra flowers. And I'm like, fill this thing up with flowers and then make it look like it's supposed to be like this. Yeah. So we had half of the order, filled it up the rest with flowers. And then when it came to dessert time, I told the baker, I was like, we're just going to replenish as people take something we replenish and they still don't know till this day that that happened they don't which is that. awesome but if we don't if you don't tell your girls like this is why we want to get here early be done early because shit's gonna go down mm -hmm. and we want to have that ability to at least help or have even if it's a 20 minutes 10 minutes five minutes extra to be able to fix things this is why set up for me we like to cushion it just a little bit just to have that possibility to have the ability to fix things if we need to and i'm sure that baker so appreciated you because we never have the mindset of this isn't my job it's like you automatically go into crisis mode management of like how i can fix this what is the best use of my time and their time and something I've learned over the years too and being through a lot of like crazy situations is some people can really think on their feet under major unforeseen pressure and some people can't. And like we were in, uh, we were doing a destination wedding with like, I don't know, 500 guests on the guest list and it was an outdoor wedding and a tornado was coming through oh, and not no. just like a little tornado, like they called it like a cell and I'm, I'm like Googling, like, what is a rain cell? Like, I didn't understand. It was really bad. And, um, but so when you have 500 guests, which they weren't there yet, but we had all the staff there and like the catering banquet lead and the floral people, like, which were not my normal people, they, cause we were on a destination event, you know, they're all looking at me and they're like, oh my God, like, what should we do? And I'm like, and I'm, am I the only person out of like 300 people that are working right now that actually can think on my feet in like when we're about to get blasted with wind and water. And I'm like, okay, I guess so. And so I'm like, take all the flowers off the table, put them up under the, the tables. And then I told the rental company, I'm like, take all the chairs, lay them down on the ground. I'm like, all of the shelves that 
have glassware on them from the catering mm-hmm. company, take all the glassware off, lay the shelves down on the ground. And we knew it was going to rain. So we had tarps uh, and I told my team, I'm like, go get the tarps tarp, you know? So it's like within 10 minutes we had a plan. And then, then they're all like, well, should we go up under the tent during the wet? And I'm like, no, if lightning <laughs> strikes, that's metal. And luckily this family, they had a huge barn and I'm like, go in the barn. Like that's wood. But I, in the moment, like we got through it and then the weather was fine and everything was perfect. And it's like, no one knew what happened. But in that moment, I step away and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I guess that is one of my like little superpowers of I can really handle the stress of telling everybody what needs to be done. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if that is just something that you're born with or if that I, I learned that from my family, but it sounds like you have that same like intuition of like, no, that's not a good use of your time. You stay there. And do you, do you feel like you have that you're building a team that can't like, is that a taught skill or do you think that that's just like something that you're born with like the intuition? Cause I, I truly don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it's a, I think it's something that can be taught. I think it's also something that comes out of experience And then it's also something that comes out of the goodness of your heart. Like (laughs) you want this to go right. Well, that and you're contracted for this to go right. So it's the fear too, you know, Mm -hmm. like, okay, what are we going to do? Because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, So I, like I said, I'm an overshare to, to my team just because they need to know, they need to know that things happen. Um, I had, I think the last one of my event managers, which I was so proud for. So it was like a proud mom moment. Again, I don't have kids, but (laughs) she, she had someone at her first wedding on her own go down in the bathroom and she was having a seizure and she looked up by the time she looked up, somebody had already called 911. And so she called dispatch and said, you are coming to a wedding. Please turn off your, your lights. I will meet you out there and I'll bring you to where she is, but just don't come with all the, sh- don't come with the whole show. I will meet you, bring you into the right place. That's awesome. And I was like, thank you. Goodness. Because that has happened to me. I have, I have dealt with that. I've dealt with it the same way and I never shared it. I shared it to other girls, but not never to her. And I was like, Oh my God. Like again, Yes, you can have intuition, like you said, but some of the things you actually have to share. So it was a proud, you know, proud mom moment. Um, That's so awesome. But that doesn't always happen. She could have just like, been like, cool, I'm going to, ambulance is coming. All right, it's fine. Bride and groom never knew that there was an ambulance there, by the way, either. And the dance floor was like 30 feet from where the lady was. I don't know how they didn't know. Which is like the goal, like for, as, from yeah. a leader's perspective, I'm like, if everybody can just keep their mouth shut and let us handle it, <laughs> not ruin their day. Um, Cause sometimes it, it is hard to hide things from people to keep yeah. their day perfect. It is, it's challenging. It's hard. Mm-hmm. And it's not only hiding, but in that situation, if, you know, I've had, I've had cops called because we were too loud and at that <laughs> When, when that happens, I have to be like, no, you're not coming. You're not coming in. We're, we're, we're within the, um, ordinances. So I'll lower the base and, but you're not coming in. Everybody's dancing. Uh-uh. We're going to think something's wrong. And they're like, yep. oh, okay. I understand. We're not, you know, unless we were like in trouble or something, then they would, it's a whole nother situation, but they're like, okay, we understand. Um, I'll fix it, you know, but yeah, you have to, if there's so much that comes into being a planner, I think, because you have to uh, try to predict what is going to happen with whatever the decision that you make, which is impossible, which leaves you into this strain, like, okay, if I do this, this is going to happen, but we already planned for this, and this person's coming at this time, will this actually work out? And sometimes you just have to make the decision, and you're like, oh, well, should have made that decision. Now what? Now I got to fix this. Um, but, but we learn from it. It's always a great do. learning experience. We do. So one of the not so fun parts, at least to me, because I'm not a numbers girl, 
Um, one of the big things that you, I feel like are really good at in leading people is knowing your numbers and like how to figure numbers out. And so like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a full on creative person, uh-huh. which that is like one of the most important things that actually helped me change my business and work smarter, not harder was knowing the numbers. And one year my accountant was like, you did 30 plus weddings, not only for free, but it cost you money. You like, you paid them to like do their wedding. And I'm like, Oh my God, what did I do wrong? And Mm -hmm. you know, we weren't tracking our time. (laughs) Yeah. It was, it was like, (laughs) And and then I looked at the list of people and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't like half of those people anyway. <laughs> like they weren't very nice to us and they didn't c- care about the value that we brought to the table. And so, but it was having that number session, which really should be done quarterly in my opinion. Some people do it monthly, some people okay. do it annually. Um, but knowing your numbers and your overhead, how did you learn to know your numbers and what experience shares do you have to help those who are listening, like how to actually figure that out? Oh man. <laughs> so, I know, this was the num- so this was the number two example that I had um, as far as mistakes was I, uh, there was one year where it was an amazing year. We, we did floral, we did big, big floral. Um, and by that, I mean like we had installations and we were planning the weddings and I got to the end of the year and I did my taxes and I got slapped with, I think it was like a $15,000 tax bill. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Oh shit, I didn't save anything. Um, and I had, I wasn't prepared. And not only have I had, I lost money, but I hadn't managed it properly to be ready to pay this tax bill. Right. Everything turned out fine. I'm good now. But um, you have to know, I, I think, both personal and your business expenses. And this is how I, this is what led me into, like, into thinking I can't do this alone because then you're, getting, you're wearing a lot of hats. And I, I think that that taught me I mean, I've done weddings for free. I've done weddings that, that ha- I've charged $10,000 for. And then I do the math and I'm like, oh my God. You make nothing. I, I, <laughs> made, I made nothing. Or right. I made like $200. Cool. That doesn't, you know, take 30% of that because I got to pay taxes. Um, yep. And it's, it's like, okay, I spent, you know, like 4 a.m. I was crying at this wedding. I charged them this much and I didn't have enough help and the help that I had cost me, you know, a lot. And I didn't plan for shipping and I didn't plan for delivery fees. And now I've made $200. Hmm. Yeah. It's that, let me tell you, that feels like shit. It makes you feel like a failure. Um, makes you question a lot of things, but it is not something, it's something you can fix. Um, the good thing about events is that you can predict what it's going to cost you if you actually do your homework. You can also predict what you could, what you should be able to charge because you have, you'll, you'll have a little bit more experience as you go. And depending how you structure your business, right? Whether you're an agency charging hourly or you just have a package pricing and then you, you add on for services like flowers and other sales and other items that you may sell. But I think how to not get into that pickle, um, which is counteractive because um, you, you go into this business, you go into having a business to perhaps help your family, to support yourself. You don't do it to become a burden on yourself or to stress out and be worrying you know, how am I going to pay my vendors, you know? Amen. Um, So the first thing you need to know, and the, what I used to do is I is comb through your expenses. So you need to comb through your personal expenses first. 
um, what are you, what are you, what do you have in your personal expenses that you really need? You don't need, because if you really want to have a business, there's a lot of sacrifices that you have to make. Mm -hmm. And in my first years, it was, okay, we're not going to have a, a car payment, not optional. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go to, we're not going to have a gym membership because it's not optional. We're not going to have all these things that create monthly payments because I need every single ability to be able to take this off the ground. And if I have to have a job, it's not going to work because I'll have right. to have a job in order to pay for things that I don't even want right now. Right. So combing through your expenses, and I do this twice a year because I can't do it in the middle of, the, of wedding season. Um, so that you do notice that they that things go out of, you know, you're like, oh, this, this little subscription is not going to do anything. I'll just add it on. This little subscription is not going to do anything. And then I get to November and I'm like, oh, okay, we got we to gotta take that out. We don't really need this. We don't really <laughs> need that. Um, because it's all a math equation. Mm -hmm. The more you're spending, the more you're going to make. And I, I love business. I love having my own businesses but I also love the freedom it gives me. And I have less freedom with a more debt. That I, have. <laughs> you know? right. I don't know if that makes sense to people, but that makes sense in my life and that works for me. Um, so when I combed through my, our expenses like years ago, um, we were able to have me start creating this business from the ground up because I, I was able to take smaller projects because they were going to give me experience, give us a little bit of profit and then give us enough for the next one. And, um, it, it just worked. Right. But then that year I didn't make any money and I was like, Oh, so now we have to come through the expenses of the business. So what am I spending monthly that I need and that I don't need? So and get rid of the things that you don't need. <laughs> exactly. Um, like, it's okay. Like, yeah. And it's completely okay. And it's completely okay to flex, to flex throughout the year too, because there's, there's fixed expenses, which that's what you're going to spend, whether you're making money or not. So your Wi-Fi, um, phone, if you have rent, those are all things that you're going to spend every month, whether you're making money or not you need to know those expenses. Then on top of that, you need to know what it's going to cost you to service people. If you have, you know, we're talking service-based business. If you have one package and it costs you, I don't know, for, just to make simple math, a thousand dollars is what you charge and $300 is what it costs you. You need to know that those $700 need to be enough that you have left over. Those $700 need to be enough to pay for your monthly expense that you're going to be spending, whether you make money or not, then that has to make enough to pay your taxes. And then right. what's left over is what you get to keep. But a lot of people don't understand that. What has helped me is, you know, now that <laughs> we know our numbers, when someone's like, can you just help me do my event for this much? It's really easy for me to say, I, like, I hate saying no, but I'm like, I run a business and it's a for-profit business and I have to pay people and expenses and my business manager will strangle me if, because, you know, and then they're like, oh, okay. And in my head, I'm like, hell no, I'm not taking on your event. Like, I'm not going into debt for you. But, you know, it's just like, people don't understand. They think that we live in like fairy glitter land like actually not running a business when we're just because it's creative and just because we love what we do and just because we're having fun doesn't mean we have to like go broke doing it. So at least like, like you said, like know your numbers, like so mm -hmm. insightful. So where can people connect with you if they want more info? Sure. So you can find me at Planner and Training Podcast. Um, that's plannerandtraining.com. Um, Instagram is at Planner and Training. You can follow me personally, if you can spell my name, <laughs> <laughs> at 
Fiorella Nera. Um, I'll send you, you have my link so you can tag me. You can we find me that do. Way. Um, yeah, I'm more active in my personal and then on our podcast, it goes out twice a month. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of these great insights and nuggets today. And guys, be sure to go over and check out plannerintraining.com. Follow them on Instagram and we will put all the links in the show notes. So if you want to follow, um, so her friends call her Fee. <laughs> so she's like, you can just call me Fee. Um, if you want to follow her personally and see some of the beautiful things that she's doing and being a leader in the creative wedding and event space, be sure to follow her. And thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a delight talking to you. Awesome. And everybody, thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in next week for another episode of Business Unveiled. Have a great day. Bye. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it with your friends. And I'm so very grateful if you leave a review. Be sure you are a subscriber so you never, ever miss the juicy details of Business Unveiled. Also, be sure that you are part of my email list. And if you're not, sign up today at AngelaProfit.com where I share valuable resources and exclusive products with only my subscribers. Now, before I go, I want to ask you, if you have a story or a product to share with the creative industry, please let me know. To be considered as a guest on Business Unveiled, visit AngelaProfit.com and submit a podcast guest form. Until next time, remember to stay productive and profitable. You've been listening to Business Unveiled with Angela Profit. Join us next time as we share our experiences to help you be more productive and profitable in your creative business. For more great resources, visit AngelaProfit.com.